Would you get milked for a free pack of seeds? Wait, what? What's up, man? You got some serious milk for us tonight? I I got some I got some almond milk here. All right, but what's the situation? You gotta go see what the fuck's up, man. You gotta get in there. What happened? What's up? Did you get milked? Did you get milked? I think he milked you. Oh, she don't even know what just happened. Oh, she was sound asleep, Mike. Oh, full <laughs> sleep, man. Dang. Got my, my dog after me, man. Oh, he's salty, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, what are we exactly watching? Well, we're watching a little Instagram live that Mike did, you know, years and years, you know, like a couple of years ago at this point. I, I, I screen recorded it myself because I thought it was just hilarious. During COVID, you did like one of the milk challenges. Probably yeah. the, one of the funniest things I've ever seen on, on Instagram. But I, what I, I remember when I first, when I, when I saw it and I was screen recording it, I remember seeing, first of all, like truly how much of it, like, like a really engaged, invigorated audience that Mike and Exotic Gen X has. I mean, it's, I mean, just watch this clip right here. The DM and, uh, I got you. I got you. Appreciate that. All right, my man. Take it easy. Go home. All right. I didn't see it either, but she did get hit. And she was full sleep. All right, here we go. Another four piece. Oh, geez, hold on. I fucked that one up. Ghetto Red. OMFG. Devil's Drip. Red Delicious. No. Who are you about to, who are you about to get? No, no, definitely do it. I got a grower. Right. He's a new, he's a 22-year-old kid, but he's passed out right now in the chair in the office. I'm trying to get him. Hold on. He passed out at work, man? He just smoked it already. That's it. Yo, son. And it's in one of the, uh, two liters. Damn, he does. Yo, yeah, I, I got sleep. you with the. Why you sleep? Why you sleep? That's the real question. Oh, son. Oh, no. Oh, bro, it was right. Don't you sleep no more, rock. bro. <laughs> Don't yes. sleep no more, bro. God damn, bro. Yeah, I hope you ain't like that shirt. Uh, what happened? Damn, he got juiced. Damn, you got fucking soft up, bro. That's what you get sleeping. Box. How did you get for sleeping? He want to fight, dude. He want to fight you. I mean, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, Yo, my man, I got you red. on a couple packs. Bro, you got to get my eyes, bro. Yo, bro, it was rotten. Oh, shit, it was, bro. It was rotten mustard and What's tea up, and some weird coffee. Hey, he's, he's, he's the biggest fan yeah, of yours. Dude, he's constantly talking fire, about it. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Bro, that slap's amazing, bro. We're glad to see man. Bro, that Falcon 9 is top 10 on my list, bro. Boom. Hot, bro, it's a blessing to talk to you, bro. It's a Love blessing, that, bro. man. Yo, so you still uh, mad? Bro, I'm not even mad, bro. I'm not even mad. So, in this episode, we are going to be telling the story of one Mike of Exotic Genetics. Someone that, you know, is kind of a fan favorite, I think. I'd say almost like the people's champ or one of them. If you guys are new to the channel, the Retro Tech channel, or if you're on the LMC channel, Make sure to go subscribe to either or. Also, go sign up for our for our free. It's a free and paid platform. If you go to www.highdesign.media, you're gonna get access to videos like this early, plus a bunch of other perks. Go check it out. Anyways, guys, this is Retro Tech. This is LMC. Let's run it. All right, bro, come with me. I've been working so hard on this. I cannot wait to show you. What I'm about to have some fire weed. You got that A1? Yes, bro. Let me see it. Look at that, bro. Straight gas. What the fuck is this, bro? What are you talking about? It's fire. Dude, this is ass, bro. The guy I got the genetics from. This is not the one, dude. Look how sad these plants look, bro. No, no, he said they, He said this is what they're supposed to look like. Nah, bro, you just got fucking finesse, dude. This is terrible. What? Bro, you got some dense nugs in here, bro. Shut the fuck up, bro. You know where you need to go, bro? Where? You need to go to the fucking phenohunt.com. Get oh. yourself some good genetics, some I good will. clones. This Use the discount code LMC20 to get 20% off. There you go. You're welcome. This shit 
is ass, bro. Dude. Here you go, the Fino Hunt ASAP. Hey, just want to say a big thank you to the Breeders Agency for supporting this content. If you guys go to thebreedersagency.com, go check it out. If you're a breeder or if you are a commercial company looking for, you know, to work with different uh, breeders, go over to thebreedersagency.com. We're going to link that down below in the pinned comment and in the description. But go over there, go see our, our, our boy Dan. And um, he's gonna take care of you. He's gonna be able to, you know, facilitate a bunch of different things for breeders, um, as well as for commercial companies looking to take their, you know, cultivation to the next level. So go check them out. It's thebreedersagency.com. Anyways, let's jump back into it. The landscape of the cannabis industry is vast. Countless pioneers and innovators have shaped its history. One name stands out in particular distinction, exotic genetics. This company shows how important precision and consistency are when building a brand. As we mentioned, the mind behind Exotic Genetics is Mike. Over the past decade, he has become synonymous with excellence and innovation in pot breeding. Mike grew up moving from army base to army base until his family settled in Tacoma when he was eight years old. He grew up there skating, smoking weed, and enjoying the surrounding nature. Just like many breeders, Mike had been a stoner for years before he got into cultivation. It wasn't until he went to college that he started dabbling and growing his first plants. In an interview with Weed Maps, like Mike states, I was going to school for computer networking and engineering because I had been laid off from painting cars for many years. I smoked weed. I started hearing about medical cannabis where I could get a weed card, smoke pot, and not get in trouble. So I got one and started dabbling and trying to grow my own weed. I spent a couple of years just trying to figure out what the fuck I was doing. At this point, he was starting to see the potential of where growing pot could take him. As he puts it, I started to grow some decent pot in my tent in one of my spare bedrooms. So I said, fuck it, maybe I'll just become a plant scientist. And I changed my major to biology. I remember the first check they gave me as a student loan slash grant. And I took that $5,000 and went and bought all of the equipment for my very first real grow room. Now, during this period of his life, Mike was also working behind the counter at a hydroponic store in exchange for free grow equipment. While working there, he started to notice many customers had problems with pests and diseases and they had brought into their garden with third-party clones. He realized that if he could offer them high-quality genetics in seed form, he could solve his customer's problem. The main focal point of that is that I gave them out for free for like two years. Mm -hmm. Like I gave seeds out for free. I never sold anything then. And um people would just come back tell me a success story and i would give them more and uh, like i said for about two years i was just making seeds to give out to people in the shop experimenting stockpiling uh, making my own kind of um a library so to speak but just uh kind of like a preservation of each strain like if i didn't want to keep it anymore i would make some seeds with it and then throw the cut away and keep the seeds to come back to it at a later date but all those seeds essentially, well, those early seeds found their way into a lot of people's hands by me just giving them out for free for the first couple of years. Mike started giving his clients seeds and before long, the hydroponic store was full of people. So Mike decided that it was time to take growing seriously. He started experimenting with breeding and harvesting his own seeds. To do this, he knew he needed more powerful genetics to start with. So you have to like go through process of elimination. You start, the way I would do it is I would start with, you know, 10, 20 males, when I would narrow it down, I would then, you know, weed out the ones I didn't like. Maybe it was too short, maybe it was too tall. Maybe it didn't grow the best. Then I would throw them into flower. And then maybe some would stretch too much. Maybe some didn't grow, uh, stack properly the, the, the male parts versus um, other things. Maybe some smelt a little bit better. But once I got to about the two week mark in flower, I would have to make a decision on which male I was gonna use. Not a lot of people did that. A lot of people would just pop some seeds, select their best male in veg, and that was the male they were going to use in the end. But I, again, that's flawed as well, because you don't even know what you're, you know, it's not flowering, you don't know the traits. All you know, that thing is going to stretch times five and be an undesirable plant. Now you just pollinated your whole fucking female harvest with that. So while Mike was learning to grow, he would exchange knowledge through several breeding groups and online forums that he was a part of. But it wasn't until the positive reviews from the clients at the hydroponic store that he realized that he had something truly special. With his now more refined genetics, Mike decided to take it to the next level and start a company. In 2008, Exotic Genetics was born. The first strain he started with was called Supernatural. 
It was a Flav male cross with a grape god female. And three years later, it took second at Seattle's first Cannabis Cup. And so we, we entered the High Times Cup that year. I think it was 2011. Um, and I went there. I, I was giving out seeds to people. And we ended up taking second place just right, right out the gate. So I was kind of a, a little jump start. And I got this little weird taste of, man, that was awesome. You know, going on stage, getting an award, getting a little recognition. Um, makes you feel good when you've been busting your ass for years trying to just make it. Um, so after that happened, I spent the next year trying to, you know, go into the cups, trying to win, win again because I wanted a cup, man. But a whole year passed and I finally won a third place again a year later. And I was like, damn, I'm going the wrong way. And um, so again, I, I kept grinding again. For, so on, on the third year, finally, um, we finally won our first cup in Denver. I think it was 2013 or 14. And then after that cup, man, they just kept coming, coming, coming. We can't do it without these guys. We had a blast all weekend. At that point, Mike started to pour all of his time and energy into expanding his genetics library. Each strain developed under the exotic genetics banner is a product of Mike's deep understanding of the plant, his innovative breeding techniques, and his commitment to quality. Mike's lines are worked over and over again until he finds and stabilizes what he's looking for. His rigorous breeding techniques have allowed him to create some of the most stable feminized seeds on the market. We had no idea what we were about to unlock and discover and really through more and more feminized breedings, the data and just kind of the, based on what we had, based on the experience and, and making fem seeds, um, the discoveries were crazy down the line like we found that feminized seeds are absolutely and i'll argue this with anybody out there you'll get guys that say oh feminized seeds aren't stable feminized seeds don't grow very strong plants feminized seeds this feminized seeds that it's all bullshit so under mike's guidance exotic genetics introduced countless strains that have captivated connoisseurs and patients alike Mike's work includes strains like Cookies and Cream, a highly sought after flavor that boasts a perfect balance of aroma and potency, as well as Grease Monkey, with its resinous buds and powerful effects. Those strains are just the tip of the iceberg. Now, let's get into some more of the details about the lineages of some of Mike's best work. As you know, his deep catalog offers a diverse array of flavors and genetic profiles. Let's start by talking about one of the biggest names in the exotic genetics lineup, Cookies and Cream which was made in 2013 by crossing Girl Scout cookies, specifically the cookie family Thin Mint Cut, with the Strain Starfighter. And this is when things really started to take off. So in the same Weed Maps interview I referenced earlier, Mike says, I was a member of the THC Farmer. They had an auction for this crazy strain called Starfighter, and I had to have it. At the time, it went for several thousands of dollars. He says, I popped it eight or nine seeds, and I had two males. As I started flowering them, one of the starfighter males ended up being a female, and that female ended up being the flagship starfighter that I ran for years. So he sent me those seeds, and I remember popping a bunch of them, and I popped a bunch. I popped like 12 at the time, and 10 of them were females, and two of them were males. And I was like, all right, well, I'll hold on to these males and, you know, maybe make some more crosses or experiment some more with these. And what was wild is that the 10 females that I had were kind of trash. They weren't like, don't get me wrong, they were huge and big, but they were just kind of not what I was expecting. They weren't like the pictures. They weren't, you know, there was nothing really special about them. I was kind of disappointed. But anyway, I kept going. Um, and I was, I remember make or remember in the breeding room the day that i found out that one of those males actually ended up being a female and because i thought it just wasn't showing long enough so maybe it's got to be a male it's growing kind of similar to the other one so it's probably male but come to find out one of them ended up being a female and that female ended up being the craziest plant i've ever seen in my life and not just the craziest, but like it, it made waves again. It was like the next thing after the blueberry in Washington that made just crazy waves. I mean, still people here talk about the Starfighter, the Starfighter. It is rumored that some growers have paid upwards of $20,000 for the Starfighter clones. 
Once Mike launched Cookies and Cream, exotic genetics really started to make its mark on the industry. In that 2013 to 2014 time period, Mike started rapidly creating some of the best strains in the modern industry and truly dominating the cup scene. He hasn't slowed down since. Some of Mike's success can be attributed to his ability to identify and capitalize on industry trends. For example, Girl Scout Cookies was a rising star in the industry during the 2010s, and so by using genetics that consumers were familiar with, he was able to give his customers something he already knew they wanted, and also put his own touch on it, right? Which has been really smart. He has continued implementing his strategy and it's certainly paid off. In 2014, he crossed his Starfighter to a Blackberry Kush to create the famous Kimbo Kush. And this is another display of Mike's excellent branding. He's combined the name of a well-known fighter, Kimbo Slice, with the name of the most famous strain of all time, Kush, or one of the most famous strains of all time. And he was basically saying this pot will punch you in the face, right? In 2016, Mike crossed his cookies and cream strain to GG4 in order to make Grease Monkey, when he used to create a powerful sativa, Lemon Drip, by crossing it to Lemon Tree. Pure sativas aren't as popular in today's market, which Mike knew, so he added an extra indica kick with his Grease Monkey. Another legendary flavor Mike created in the 2016-2017 period is Tina. The cross of Constantine and Triple OG is used in breeding to add an intense aroma of diesel and gas. He then used Tina to create strains such as Falcon 9 by crossing it to Sunset Sherbert, which he then crossed to a Kushko OG to make Plasma Gas. These strains are renowned for their medical benefits and are regularly recommended to treat depression and PTSD. He also used Tina to create Chocolatina when he crossed it with the mint chocolate chip. I know this is getting complicated, but thank you for following along. So to continue on, right? He created mint chocolate chip in 2018 when he bred the thin mint cookies with green ribbon. Mint chocolate chip's descendants would go on to become favorites of home growers and massive recreational operations as well. They include rainbow chip, which Mike created in 2021 by adding sunset sherbet to the mint chocolate chip genetics. And the rainbow chip was then crossed with biscotti to create the extremely popular strain, Scotty Too Hottie. And this shows Mike's commitment to breeding because he continues crossing his strains over and over until he has reached the flavor profile he is looking for or discovered something new. And then next, we have to talk about the Red Pop, which is a phenotype of the cookies and cream and strawberry cross, so strawberries and cream. Red Pop was selected for its sweet cherry candy flavor profile that stood out over the other strawberries and cream plants. Eventually, he added runts to his Red Pop to create Red Runts, and Red Pop and Red Runts are used in breeding projects throughout the industry to add an intense artificial red candy flavor that is so popular with consumers right now. And this is the right way to go about getting real candy terps. No need for those spray packs. There we go. By the way, we have a documentary dropping pretty soon here on these spray packs. It's a collaboration with me and EK Doja. Keep your eyes open for that one. Anyways, Mike himself used his sweet flavor profile in his strains like Gary Poppins, which is a cross of Gary Payton and Red Runts. He then bred the Gary Poppins with his Starfighter to create Popstar. Starfighter was one of the first strains he bred with early on, but Gary Poppins is a newer creation, and this shows Mike's commitment to preserving lineages that he knows will be useful for him in future breeding. Another strategy Mike uses that shows his ability to identify industry trends is that he has created his own incredible strains using parents that were bred by other top tier growers, such as Gelato, which he created by crossing animal mints by Sea Junkies with Gelato 41. And we will be doing a full video on Sea Junkie in the near future, so keep your eyes open for that. Now the list goes on and on, and if you want to explore more of what Exotic Genetics has to offer, check out the Retailers tab on their website. And this will direct you to the sources for his seeds nationwide, as well as options for consumers, products in select states and countries. Lucky enough guys, Mike and the whole Exotic Genetics team is actually giving us a discount code to go over to his website. If you go to exoticgenetics.com and use discount code LMC20, you're actually going to get 20% off anything you order. Again, use my discount code LMC20 at exoticgenetics.com and you're going to get 20% off your entire order. Big shouts out to Mike and his whole team. And I definitely am going to be using this discount code myself. So excited for that. So make sure to go over there, use my discount code LMC20 and get 20% off your entire order. One of the hallmarks of Mike's work is his focus on the entire process of cultivation. This gives his business a transparency that some big players in the industry are lacking. His transparency has been instrumental in elevating the standards of breeding and emphasizing the importance of genetic diversity throughout the industry. Now, companies and brands and growers within the industry seek out exotic genetics for the unparalleled quality and innovation that Mike brings to every project. Throughout Mike's career, he's consistently contributed to the diversification and improvement of the pot gene pool. This is because breeders at some of the biggest companies in the industry use exotic genetics in their crosses. 
Mike is always open to his work being used by other breeders as long as he's given credit. He collaborates with growers as well through various forms of licensing agreements, which allows them to cultivate and sell his strains using the Exotic Genetics brand name. I also do a lot of uh, licensing partnerships and Gabriel was a licensing partnership. Um, I have partners in Canada, Michigan, Boston, I think like six or seven states now. And the idea, this was several years ago um, when, when Pa was hot and popping and on the up and up, which is not like it is today. But again, that's, a, that's another question to answer. But uh, several years ago, we started the licensing program where we would um, supply places with genetics, the brand, the logo, the marketing, anything that I can do that makes my brand good, I'm more than welcome to share with you in order to um, bolster the brand together as a, you know, your company powered by exotic genetics or just standalone exotic genetics grown by Gabriel, so to speak. Um, so we've had a lot of different partnerships. We've had a lot of successes. We've had uh, some failures, um, but um, those are paid partnerships and you know they pay me money to do what I do for them and what I do for them is like I said provide the genetics insight consultation anything they need to help be more successful along with the branding marketing and strands of exotic genetics so Mike's journey has not been without his challenges though navigating the complexities of an evolving industry regulatory hurdles and the constant pursuit of excellence requires resilience and adaptability the awards that Exotic Genetics has won over the years are a testament to Mike's dedication to the quality of his work. Numerous cannabis cups and industry recognitions showcase the high esteem in which Exotic Genetics is held by peers and consumers alike. As we look ahead, the story of Mike and Exotic Genetics is far from complete. With each strain lies the potential for a new chapter in the ever-evolving narrative that is the pot industry. Mike continues to innovate in the garden and on the business side as well. Mike's strains have been grown and bred by the smallest home growers in the world and some of the biggest companies in the industry. And this is because despite his success, Mike has stayed loyal to his small, up-and-coming growers who are trying to do what he did 10 years ago. He offers information and support through his Discord channel, which is by far one of the most active in the entire industry. So yeah, first of, first and foremost, I don't discriminate against anybody. Uh, anybody who grows pot, I can help. Um, now, when it comes to who is my target audience, although it is everybody, my target audience was always, is always, and will, it's, it's never gonna change, is the home grower, for sure. The, you know, the, the tent tycoons, the, the the basement bandits, the garage gorillas, however you want to call them, <laughs> these guys who grow it for themselves. He offers versatility and discounts to his customers who purchase non-commercial amounts. Currently, you can buy individual seed packs from the Exotic Genetics website, or you can build a custom box that comes with additional products. The Build-A-Box is something that you, yes, you get a set amount of things in it but you also get to pick certain strains as well so depending on what tier build a box you want to do whether it's bronze silver or gold bronze comes with three packs of your choice silver is five gold is seven but those are just your picks aside from just those picks of seeds there is a slew of other shit that you get in there as well that when you do the math on these things the 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 bronze build a box build a box where you get three packs of seeds of your own choice plus six other packs plus a ton of merch plus this and that when you do the math it's like a thousand dollars worth of stuff for 300 bucks and i do want to highlight here that mike has done a really great job of always sticking with the home growers that's his base he never forgot about his base and he's now gone all digital he's doing direct to consumer and this is the kind of new era that we're in and, you know, he's been able to take advantage, like I said, of the technology that's become about, like, for example, Discord. His Discord is unmatched. It is one of the most extensive Discords I've ever seen, honestly, when it comes to the, the cannabis industry. But very dope guy, very down to earth. And it was cool talking to him. Hopefully we're going to be doing some more content with him in the near future. But in conclusion, over the past decade, 
Mike's small operation grew into an empire. Throughout the course of his career, Mike is focused on refining his cultivation techniques, studying the genetic lineage of various strains, and understanding the subtleties that contribute to the flavor, potency, and yield. The exotic genetics journey from Tacoma to the entire world is a reminder of the possibilities that lie in the art and science of breeding, as well as believing in yourself. Hey guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Retro Tech. I wanna say big shouts out to Mike for putting on for the Pacific Northwest, for putting out great products and for being a being a good dude. And, uh, and I wanna thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you guys. If you guys have any suggestions for who we should cover next or anything, definitely feel free to comment that down below or contact us, email, all that stuff. Tap in and uh, I really appreciate y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Retro Tech. Anyways, this is LMC, signing out.